We are Myth Vision. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining Myth Vision. If you have a PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, we'll take it all. How are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Jason DaCosta. Welcome to Consistent Preterism. Today we're doing a very special show, Christmas with the Cranks. A look at the dishonesty and cowardice of Derek Lambert and the Myth Vision gang. And I hope you all enjoyed my little Christmas intro there. I thought it be fitting with the lovely cover pick <clears throat> of the Cranks themselves. And, um, you know, <clears throat> pardon me, there's a lot of reasons why I uh, am going to do this audio today as I drive and cruise. Um, you know, Derek's dishonesty and his cowardice has really shined through uh, the last few days. Um, first of all, Derek has banned me from what it seems, from commenting on his YouTube channel, okay, and it it started, so Derek and I have obviously uh, had a bit of a relationship for a few years, uh, he and I have had much of the same uh, journey through our theological viewpoints, although he, <clears throat> excuse me, has now drifted off into the endless myth theories, and he's so uh, lost in theories that he'll never come to any sort of sensible understanding of what this Bible is actually saying because he's just got his claws in a hundred different things and he's missing, well, he doesn't miss because he knows he's a liar, but he's acting like he's missing the truth of AIO, okay? Um, but we've had this relationship. He had me on the show. He's talked to me about certain things. We've had conversations on the phone and Obviously, it doesn't take a genius to see that Derek has uh, an interest in I.O., okay? And he, he often asks all of his quote-unquote brilliant guests about I.O. to see what kind of reaction and remarks and rebuttals that they would give. And he does so with the hopes and expectations that these experts, so-called experts will rip it to shreds with their endless intellect, right? But unfortunately for Derek, that hasn't gone quite as planned. If you recall, Derek started to engage with the Creating Christ bozo, James Valiant, who looks a little bit like Bozo the Clown without the uh, makeup on. Um, he started to ask him about it, and so... A year or two ago, there was some engagement between him and myself over the creating Christ theory. And if you recall, I ripped that theory to absolute shreds. And I have done so probably 10 times over on my YouTube channel. But if you want a good one, if you want to take an hour, an hour and a half out of your day while you're driving, whatever it may be, and listen to me absolutely murder James Valiant's theory, all you have to do is go to the YouTube search bar, type in Jason DaCosta creating Christ theory or Jason DaCosta James Valiant or Jason DaCosta creating Christ. That's probably the easiest way. Jason DaCosta creating Christ. And I go through very methodically, not driving. I had, I, that was one of the ones where I actually sat down and focused a little bit um, back in simpler times. But uh, yeah, so check that out if you want to see me absolutely rip James Valiant to shreds. Okay. Then Lambert brought it up to, well, he's brought it up to a lot of people. In fact, one of, uh, one of the subscribers on my channel um, uh, brought to my attention that there's this kid named Jacob Berman. I think his name is Jacob Berman, maybe. I don't know. But he is a Myth Vision guest and supposedly has a wealth of knowledge in, the, in his head. And uh, he did a video like a year ago. It's the most lame 
video. In fact, I couldn't get through more than three minutes of it because it, it looks like he's doing it from a dungeon, like he's locked in somebody's basement and he has YouTube capabilities. Um, he did a video. He's got some black dude on the video with him. He's like Skyping the guy. And the video is called, just if you want to look at this pitiful production, and perhaps one day I'll come around and just rip that to shreds too, but it's really not worth my time. It, it looks like a fourth grader did it. And honestly, he sounds like a fourth grader. The audio is horrible. He mumbles. He, he slurs his words. I don't know if he's high on meth or something. Who knows? But it's a horrible production. But if you want to look for it, just put Jacob Berman, Israel only. You should find it. it it's basically him uh, in his mother's basement. And so this bozo tried to refute I.O. Then he, he goes on and he asks Dr. Robert Price about I.O. And we all remember this, right? When Robert Price was asked about I.O. one too many times. When Derek hit him with the O so clear. What does Hebrews 9.15 mean? That he died for sins committed under the first covenant. What does Romans 9 mean? Where Paul literally defines the saved Gentiles as the children of Israel. What does all this mean, Dr. Price? And Dr. Price decided that he had enough. He was going to throw up his hands. You never see the doc get mad, too, by the way, which I'm, I'm pretty proud. I'm proud because AIO drove Dr. Price to a state of anger. Anger. I mean, you could almost see him shaking a little bit. He was so angry. Now, again, I always bring up the point. <clears throat> Why would a Bible mind such as the Price not want to talk about I.O. It's a theory. It's a very, very good theory. It's a theory that uses nothing other than the text that it's given. It doesn't jump around. It doesn't go to the 4th century. It doesn't go back to 700 B.C. It looks specifically and exclusively at the texts that we are given in the Bible. So why wouldn't Price want to look at that? Why would he throw up his hands in pure anger and frustration and literally say to Derek that he doesn't want to talk about Israel only ever again? And of course, Derek tucked his little tail between his legs and said, OK, Papa Price, we won't do that anymore because you are the main reason why I have so many subs, because I'm using you, I'm, I'm pawning you off for money. Okay, because that's what Derek's doing. Derek's a genius in that regard. All right, He's, he uses his addiction for his own personal gain or his prior addiction. He uses this myth vision, you know, pawn off Dr. Bob Price, go visit him four times a month. I mean, this guy must be like, what the hell? I mean, I'm sure he, he's liking it because Derek's paying him. But Derek's literally going to this guy's house four times a month to ask him questions. So, yeah, the gloves are off. All right, because I've had enough with the dishonesty and the cowardice of these chumps, okay? I used to have somewhat respect for this kid, but now I don't. He's in the doghouse, he's in the shitter, and he's not coming out. So Bob Price showed his true colors and gave up on AIO. He didn't want anything to do with it. Ask yourself a simple question here, folks. Why would he give up on AIO? Why not crush it like the cockroach that it's supposed to be? Okay, then moving along from Bob Price, Derek rallies up 700 bucks and pays Dr. Richard Carrier, the esteemed, God-hating, sexual deviant, multiple girlfriend, atheist himself. If you're wondering what that's all about, yeah, Carrier was married for 20 years, divorced his wife because he figured out that he was polyamorous, if that's how you pronounce it where you have multiple girlfriends. He just figured that that's the way, that's how he was wired. He needed multiple girlfriends. Hey, listen, bozo, it's called you're a pervert and you're a sexual deviant. That's what it is. Don't put a title on it. You're a scumbag, plain and simple. And so he's got this, and this is fact. You can fact check this. Go to Carrier's site and search his little polyamorous, uh, polyamorous, whatever you call it, Search it on his site and you'll find an article. Uh, he wrote a blog all about his sexual uh, explorations. And if you go to how to book him, uh, maybe I'll link it in this since we're roasting these losers. 
Okay, what I'll do is I'll link these these links later on today. Uh, I'll link them in the comments so you guys can go and check out what a piece of shit this guy really is. If you look at his site, he's actually got a page where it's about booking him. And if you want to cringe, go to that page and read how to book this guy. Now, obviously, it's written by him because he's using me and I and I will come and you will put me in a hotel and all this. So obviously, he's writing about himself, but it's just you can tell how into himself this guy really is. He is so self-absorbed, so egotistical, so obsessed with himself. And it's beautiful because AIO just stomped him out like the little cockroach sexual deviant that he is. But you should read the page because it's funny. He, he tells the people that if they're going to book him, he needs a reasonable hotel. He, they pay for all their travel. <clears throat> and he says he may bring, <clears throat> pardon me, ready for it? A girlfriend. A girlfriend. So he's like Hugh Hefner in a sense, except he's broke, dumb, and looks like Andy Dick. So Richard Carrier was commissioned by Derek Lambert to rip IO to shreds, to rip IO to shreds, to come on and look at IO and use that wealth of useless knowledge in his curly head and rip IO to shreds. And so Carrier produced probably a 40 page article or blog. I don't know how long it was, but it was lengthy and it was pitiful. It was absolutely pitiful. It didn't deal with any of the problems. It created a million red herring arguments, none of which dealt with the issues at hand, totally using smokescreen tactics, just like many others before him to sort of drown the main focus of AIO to, to try to hide all the evidence, cover it up so nobody sees it, and just bury it with word vomit. That's what That was his tactic. But of course, us AIOers can see right through that nonsense. And so we came back and we ripped him to shreds in 20 minutes or less. I've done it three times already on my channel. Mike Bradley put out a 45-page article that absolutely destroyed the thing. Michael Barris ripped them to shreds as well. <clears throat> but you know what's funny? <clears throat> and you're going to see a pattern here. Myself, Mike Barris, and Mike Bradley, the three amigos, the three musketeers of AIL, we all went over to Richard Carrier's blog and we commented because Derek was saying, I want you guys to engage in the comments. He wants to engage. He's going to engage you, right? You guys didn't even engage Jason Staples, right? I ripped Staples nonsense to shreds as well. But he said we didn't, we didn't engage with Staples. So we wanted to make sure that we engaged with Carrier. Well, guess what, folks? <clears throat> Carrier shut us down on the comments in just two days. Two days. Okay, personally, now I, I've read the other comments and he says pretty much the same thing to Barris and Bradley. My comments to Richard Carrier were so short and sweet. Two comments, probably three paragraphs each. Short, sweet, to the point, just like I like it. Because I don't like when other people do that to me. I, I, you know that I hate when people come on the page and splatter me with an essay. Because I'm not going to read it. I'm, not, I'm sure as hell not going to respond to it. But if you come on my page and you put two, three concise uh, statements or paragraphs, you'll get a much better response from me. I'll read it. I'll put together a nice response for you. You probably won't like it if you're an objection, but I will do that. And so I, I use that same mindset when responding to Carrier on his blog article in the comments. You can still see it. It's still there. I linked that article in the first video I did of Andy Dick, I mean Richard Carrier, a few days ago. So check it out. But I asked him a few questions. He came back. You could tell he had no answers. He, his, his <clears throat> method of uh, engaging is to simply list your statement and then put non sequitur. <laughs> That's what he does. Non sequitur. I dealt with this. And then he'll list another statement. Red herring. And then he'll list another statement, 
red herring. You haven't dealt with any of my article. That's how we respond. So there's no engagement. This guy's not dealing with our points. He's ignoring everything that we're showing him. He's ignoring it all. With good reason, of course. So then I said, okay. I said, that was a pitiful response. And I came back and I laid it out for him again. Nice, short, sweet comment. Very, very easy to understand. And I'll, I'll probably, <clears throat> um, I don't know if I have them saved. It'll probably take a minute for me to get to them, but I can sum them up for you here in a minute, what I said to the guy. But he comes back after this comment. Now, I knew that he was going to have a hard time with the second comment because the second comment will put anybody to sleep. Anybody. I don't care who you are. It'll put anybody to sleep. Okay, I showed him. I said, listen, Dick, I said, you know, I said, your comments on Jesus not having the nations in view were pitiful. They're laughable. But let's move along and let me ask you a question. I said, so I said the two sticks of Ezekiel 36, where the two houses of Israel being brought back together, those that two stick imagery, Paul is not using the two stick imagery for the two houses of Israel in Romans 10, whatever it is, I think it's 10. I said that, that the two branch, uh, imagery that Paul is using there, you mean to tell me that's not the two sticks of Ezekiel with the two houses of Israel? I said, okay, LOL. Then I went on. I said, and let me ask you a quick question. I said, you say there's no justifiable reason for us to assume that Paul's writing about the lost Israelites when he's speaking of his Gentiles, particularly in the fullness of the Gentiles statement in Romans 11. I said, but what about Genesis 48, where that statement is used? Fullness of the Gentiles, fullness of the nations. Because remember, the word is ethnos, it's nations. One other time in the whole scripture is that statement used, fullness of nations. And guess where it is? Genesis 48. And guess what it says? It says, Ephraim, your descendants, in other words, the 10 tribes, the northern kingdom, Israel, your descendants shall become a fullness of nations. It uses multitude, but some translations choose fullness because that's its main definition in the Hebrew, fullness. So Israel's descendants are promised to become a fullness or a multitude of nations in the story. One time it's used in the Old Testament. One time. And it's all about Israel's descendants. And then we come to Romans 11, and here's Paul saying, when the fullness of the nations comes in, all Israel will be saved. All Israel will be saved. So I asked them that, and I knew I wasn't going to get a response because this argument puts all the babies to sleep. It rocks them all to sleep, okay? It rocks them all to sleep. And sure enough, a day later, okay, when he probably got done with his sixth girlfriend this month, he finally responded and he said, these are ridiculous arguments not worthy of my time or whatever. He said, you still haven't addressed any points in my article and I'm done with you. Your time is done here. I won't be responding to any more of your comments. Now, folks, <laughs> think about what just happened. AIO put them all to sleep. It put them in a chokehold that they couldn't get out of and they all went night-night. And the great Sexual deviant Dr. Richard Carrier was no different. He went night-night, real quick, two rounds. That's all it took, two short comments, and he quit. He gave up. He doesn't want to engage anymore. Why is that? The genius Bible guy himself will not engage someone who's clearly hitting him with ironclad facts and evidence for the view. And so he decides that it's better off that he doesn't engage the view. Why would someone do that? Isn't this very Don, Dr. Don K. Preston-esque? Of course it is. He did the same thing. He decided that AIO wasn't worthy of his time, so he, wanted, he just said, you know what? We're not going to talk about it anymore. I'm not going to entertain it. I'm not even going to address it. Folks, the only reason anyone ever does this, and notice they don't do it with any other view. They don't do it with anything else. They'll address any other view. They'll, they'll look in, they'll delve, they'll, they'll talk about it, they'll engage. They might even debate. But AIO, they don't want 
to touch it. And the proof is right there. That's the proof. That's all you need to know how true this view is. Is because these guys who have invested their entire lives into putting on a facade that they know what they're talking about, getting paid to take one of their multiple girlfriends to a, to a state and talk up, talk to a few idiots, you know, and, and uh, like he put in his uh, blog page, just make sure you feed me copious amounts of alcohol. That was literally in Carrier's uh, blog page. So the guy's a prick. He deserves what he's got coming to him and what he's getting right now. And so we got Derek. We got, oh, by the way, <clears throat> let's talk about Derek. Okay, because Derek's now joined in with the cranks. Okay, let me read you because I commented on Derek's uh, channel. Okay, on the latest video on Myth Vision podcast, and I said basically, when is Carrier's IO video coming out? We're salivating here, waiting for it so we can engage in the comments. And so this was Derek's response. You ready for it? And it doesn't even make sense. I mean, I, I really think this kid just has faked it until, he's, until he makes it. Because this doesn't make any sense. I don't think he even knows what he's talking about. He said this. It would be a waste of time engaging AIO. Their hermeneutics, they're spelled T-H-E-R-E. Their hermeneutics for Gentiles being lost tribes of Israel in Paul are the same as black Hebrew Israelites and Christian identity. What? Wait a minute. What, what does that mean? Our hermeneutics are the same as black Hebrew Israelites? How so? Black Hebrew Israelites think they're the ones in focus. Dummy. Our hermeneutics honor audience relevance and context. And then he says, we're the same as the Christian identity? How so? Because we actually look at what the Bible says and, and formulate our opinions based on what's in the book rather than a hundred different theories and opinions and, you know, word vomit theories that you have on your show? Is that why we're like the Christians? Ridiculous. He goes on. He says, I have decided to end engagement with IOers on Facebook and I may do the same on YouTube due to the abundantly clear cognitive dissonance of considering why the Gentiles in Paul were pagans. So in other words, how convenient could this be? Derek has decided to end engagement with AIOers as he's just about to have Carrier on the show to talk about IO. Now, isn't that convenient? Here we are, myself and others, looking forward to the video so that we can ask Carrier questions in front of the peanut gallery. So we can put his lack of knowledge on display for all to see. Just like we did with Price. Just like we did with Price. And if you want to see me rip Price, just go to my channel, put Jason DaCosta, Dr. Robert Price. There's plenty of videos. He went down very quickly. Okay. But isn't it convenient that about a week before Derek decides or whatever it is to do this video with Carrier on IO, that he's going to end debate on IO. He's not going to talk to us anymore. And guess what he did with me? He deleted all my comments. He deleted them all. And I'm sure that I'm blocked from commenting on the channel. Now, why is that, folks? Why is that? I think you know why. Here he goes. He continues on, Derek. He says, the idea that it's all just a story of make-believe is to exclude the reality if letters being written to actual people on the ground in the first century. I don't even know what that, that sentence doesn't even make any sense. The idea that it is all just a story of make-believe is to exclude the reality, I'm pretty sure he meant to put of, not if, of letters being written to actual people on the ground in the first century. So wait a minute. So I thought Derek was, Derek didn't believe in the authenticity of a lot of these letters, right? I mean, that's the whole gist of his show. Now here, he's making the argument that it's to exclude the reality of letters being written to actual people on the ground in the first century. We don't, we don't take a stance one way or the other. Personally, I don't need to. I don't need to say, oh, this was a, a real historical document that was really sent to people in Rome. I don't need to say that. I'm not, I'm not, I don't care about that. I don't care when it was written. I don't care if it was really written before AD 70 and it was God's honest truth and these people really did receive a Holy Spirit and they really raptured up to heaven in AD 70 like it says. I don't care about that. 
I don't care if it was written after AD 70 as sort of a, you know, a, a poetic, ideal, fairy tale type story of Israel's salvation leading up to the destruction of the temple. I don't care what it was. So that sentence makes no sense. And it's kind of contradictory because all his guests do is talk about how fraudulent these letters are. He goes on, he says, we have no historical evidence backing this idea. Rather, the contrary, if one is using the lost tribes argument, we need only look at Josephus writing in 73 AD saying the 10 tribes were east of Rome, <laughs> as if that's an argument. The ten, Josephus saying the 10 tribes were east of Rome. Josephus also said the 10 tribes were beyond the Euphrates and are a great number, far too wide to be estimated. A great multitude, far too wide to be estimated. Well, that's the same thing Revelation says about the uh, great multitude coming back from the nations, doesn't it? They were a great number, far too wide to be estimated. How convenient. How convenient. Okay. So that was Derek's comment to me. And this is what he got back from me. I said, Derek, now I wasn't holding any, any punches here because I've had it. I've absolutely had it with this kid and with Myth Vision and the dishonesty. Okay, they're cowards. They really are. They all back out. They don't want anything to do with AIO. We comment. They come back. We comment again. They block us. They shut us down. They don't want to hear it. Why? There's only one reason why. But this is what I said to Derek. I said, Derek, you're a joke. A total dishonest fraud. You and the other guys say there's no justifiable reason to assume that the fullness of the Gentiles in Paul are the lost tribes of Israel. No justifiable reason? And then I quoted, Ephraim, your descendant shall become a fullness of nations in Genesis 48. I said, are you kidding me? The Bible says exactly that. I said, you bozos claim there's no justification for assuming these pagans are Israelites. When in reality, that's legitimately all the Old Testament talks about. I said, how many examples do you need? Everything you idiots claim doesn't exist, exists. Everything you idiots claim is unjustifiable is justifiable. Everything you idiots claim is forced is just simple story trajectory. You've proven the power of AIO. I've shown 500 ways to Sunday how and why these absolutely are supposed to be Israelites gathered in. And you've thrown in the towel. You, Carrier, Price, you're all the same. You all know you couldn't contend with AIO, so you all gave up. Pathetic. I said, I'll be destroying Carrier's horrendous blog in the coming weeks when time allows. I'll also continue to piece the story together even further to show that you experts don't have a clue what you're doing in the Bible. Your guests may have skulls full of useless facts and historical info, but they all have one thing in common. They're terrible when it comes to the Bible. Not one of them can contend with AIO. Thanks for joining the list of experts who AIO has put to sleep in two rounds or less. And so when that comment posted, Derek obviously didn't like it, okay? Because he knew where it was headed. He knew that people in his peanut gallery were gonna see my arguments and he didn't want them there. So what did he do? Well, he deleted the comment and he, he deleted the whole thread and I'm 99% sure I'm not allowed to comment on the channel any longer, okay? So something's going on here, folks. Something very mysterious and fishy is going on here and you know what it is. These guys are afraid to deal with the responses and the objections from AIO. Well, that's just too bad. One thing they're also saying, and some idiot came to my channel and commented saying that I, I didn't even address one of Carrier's points in the article, in my audio. They say that I'm not addressing his points. They're saying that I'm avoiding his points. Well, no, I'm not avoiding his points. This is what I mean. These people, they don't listen. I don't think they're listening to what's being said. I'm d dealing directly with Carrier's main two points, directly. His main two points, number one, Jesus didn't have the nations in view in the Gospels. That's one of his main points, you know. That was his main, that might have been how he started the article, if memory serves me. That Jesus in the Gospels and in Revelation, I think he combines them, but specifically the Gospels, did not have any nations in view in the Gospels. It was all about the Jews, says Carrier. And I showed him, I said, Bozo, you're way off. For Christ's sake, 
like how I use that there. For Christ's sake, Jesus actually said in Matthew 24, this good news gospel of the kingdom will go to all nations, ethnos, and then the end will come. The same word Paul uses in Romans 11, ethnos, fullness of the nations. So you're telling me Jesus didn't have the nations in view in the gospels? What? Jesus commissioned them to go to the ends of the earth. Jesus told them that he had sheep also not of the Jewish fold, and they too had to come in. Jesus gave the parable of the prodigal son, which is about a good law observant, father observant son staying home and a rebellious son leaving the fold and heading out to the nations and becoming dirty and unclean, unclean, okay? Jesus in the gospels, by the power of the Holy Spirit, prompted Caiaphas to prophesy that Jesus not only died for the Jews, but also for the sons of God scattered abroad. Well, who were the sons of God scattered abroad? They were the Israelites. They were the Israelites. They were the seed. They were the descendants. And they were being gathered in. They were the elect. I showed these guys how the elect is a concept that they have to get in their heads. They have to understand that there's a Holy Spirit helper leading the way to find these chosen ones. That's what the whole tale is about. Like Acts 13 and Paul preaching, it says, and as many Gentiles that were appointed to eternal life believed. These are the elect. Not everybody believed, only the chosen ones, only the ones that were marked out by the Holy Spirit. Remember when they're shocked because the Holy Spirit was also falling upon Gentiles? Well, that's because these Gentiles were chosen ones. They were heirs according to promise. They're missing the whole point of the story. It's gone over their heads a million times. So that was his first argument that everybody says that I didn't address. And I only gave you the tip. I only gave you the tip, but enough to totally crumble that pathetic point. So when you're going to say that I don't address somebody's arguments, you got to be honest because I am addressing these arguments. The second one, the second main point that Carrier makes in his article is that Paul's mission was not for the lost sheep of Israel. He says it's totally unjustifiable to, to and unreasonable to assume that the fullness of the Gentiles in Paul is the Israelites. Well, I just showed you. There's one other place in scripture that talks about a fullness of Gentiles and it's Genesis 48. And it literally says that Israel's descendants, not spiritual bozo, offspring, Israel's offspring would literally become, become, turn into a fullness or a multitude of nations. It says exactly what these guys claim it doesn't say. Right, And so I've addressed all of his main arguments in my audios. And don't, don't you think for a second that I'm not going to respond to his article. I am just super busy right now. So audio is the best way for me to do it at this point. But I am absolutely going to put forth a long presentation on that article. Absolutely I will. And I'm going to continuously grab that little prick by his curly hair and pull him back into the context. He's going to kick and scream and call for his 11 girlfriends to come and slap me around and save him. But I'm going to grab him and pull him back to the context. And he's not going to be able to get away. And it's going to be embarrassing like it always is. It's kind of funny how that passage in the Bible that God will use the the weak and stupid to humiliate the uh, the wise or I'm paraphrasing obviously but that's exactly what's happening here now obviously it's not a fulfillment but it's relevant here we are just regular Joe Schmoes and these guys are giving up they're throwing in the towel they don't want anything to do with us and that shows how true AIO is so Derek bans me and other IOers about a week or so before he's going to have Carrier on the show okay I think it's just ba- mainly because he knows all of his expert guests are going to lose credibility and they'll be embarrassed by us cranks, right? And uh, 
it's just really pitiful. It's really pitiful. I'm really disappointed in Derek. I'm disappointed in the Myth Vision guys because they claim to want to, you know, disprove Christianity. Well, hello. <laughs> AIO is the biggest threat to any Christian, you know, religion or any Christian sect that there is to date. It's the biggest threat. It shuts everybody down, as you can see. What, what these guys do on Myth Vision, it doesn't shut anybody down. It confuses people. The people that are involved in Myth Vision, you know, they're, they're, you can tell that there's a type. They just love to absorb endless amounts of useless information. That's what they, that's what they get their kicks off of. But AIO sh shuts down all religion. Clearly, night, night, goodbye. Because it honors audience relevance. It honors story trajectory, and it shows how the story comes full circle and ended in the AD 70 at the destruction of the temple. It shuts everybody down. So, folks, <clears throat> I've rambled here for 36 six minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me, haven't even had my morning coffee yet. Throat is still a little hoarse. But uh, I think you catch the gist. These guys want absolutely nothing to do with AIO, nothing at all. And, you know, perhaps in the coming years, obviously not right now, because I, I just can't, but perhaps in the coming years, what I, what I should do is I should start challenging some of these guys to formal debates. And maybe I will. Obviously, you know, I have the personal life stuff that, that would need to be ironed out, but I feel like that's getting better in terms of people understanding what I'm saying and starting to see the sense behind it. And so I think the more that I piece this thing together and the better I get at explaining it, <clears throat> the easier that situation will become. And in turn, what may happen is I may come out in five years, three years, who knows, and say, hey, listen, I want to formally debate you, Mr. 500,000 subs or you know, 1 million views. I want to debate you. You think you know the Bible? You think you know what you're talking about? Let's step into the octagon, okay? And I'll put you out in two rounds or less. I guarantee it. So folks, sit tight. Who knows what'll happen? But in the meantime, I'll continue to produce content as best as I can. And I will surely be eventually getting around to producing a long-winded response to Carrier. Okay. And another thing, quickly before I forget, I someone sent me a video of Derek on Facebook where he's sitting in his car with his glasses on. He thinks he's so cool, right? Um and he says something to the effect that Carrier dropped dropped a bomb on IO with his article. It's kind of funny. They're trying to use like our, our same words and stuff, but he's not fooling anybody. Well, he is fooling all the idiots on his channel because they don't know any better, but he's not fooling the real the real guys. Um, but he goes on and he, you know, he says something to the effect of, uh, oh, I can't remember what it was. Oh, that we should give him credit for, uh, for, for, you know, bringing IO to the forefront because he's got a lot of eyes on it. Give me a break, dude. Give me a break. Man up, take your tampon out and allow IOers to comment on your channel. Because if you don't, and if you continue to censor us, then you're just proving that AIO is true. Plain and simple. And if you want to come over to my channel and you want to comment here, I'll be more than happy to. Let Carrier know he's more than welcome to come and comment in the comments. And we'll go back and forth. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. So, folks, I hope you all have a great day. Fired up on a Monday morning. And I have not forgot about this series. We're coming at you tomorrow, probably tomorrow, maybe the day after, with, uh, I believe it's number six in our series, where we'll be taking a look at Romans chapter one, and we'll be asking the question, who are these ones who knew God and yet decided that they didn't want to glorify him, and instead they turned to worshiping idols, the work of men's hands, four-footed beasts? Who are these ones who had the revelation, had the relationship, but decided that they wanted to turn on that. And so God gave them up, Paul says. We're going to look at that on the next segment of 100 Reasons. Folks, I hope you all have a great day. Take care, everybody. Don't forget to give it a like a ruski. Bye-bye.